Fire College, welcome to each and every one of you as we gather on this second Sunday after Easter. It really is remarkable to me. It seems like Easter was a long time ago <laughs> in my life, but it was just a week ago that we gathered here in the, on that beautiful Easter Sunday, and we are very glad to be able to come together again on this uh, second Sunday after Easter, and as we enter into the Easter season, we have a couple of announcements to make, and the fact that um, our <clears throat> Zoom Bible study is on why I believe in the resurrection. And Fred, would you want to make a few comments whether you, for us, please? Uh, our Bible study is on why I believe in the resurrection. If you haven't been one of our regular attendees, it's a perfect time to join. This is uh, back to the basic series. Uh, it's very, very simple. All you need to do is, is get a hold of me. I will send you an email. I will even help you with your establishing your Zoom link if you need that. If you have a, a don't have very good internet, you can actually join us by phone. So please, join us on Wednesday. Thank you very much, Fred. And uh, our March and April mission project uh, continues to be Kinder Cottage. Our offering uh, well, for the first $250 will be matched by our church to be sent to Kinder Cottage, a preschool early education ministry in East St. Louis, and uh, our normal, of course, our expenses for the church continue as usual, even though we're in the midst of a pandemic and other kinds of, re other kinds of short changes and that come, come our way, but uh, the offering is in the back of the church as you leave and as you enter. We have two sad announcements to make, and that one is the death of the sister of Ken Harvey this past Easter, just a week ago, and uh, her name is Audrey Clayton, and uh, express our Christian sympathy to you, Ken, and her obituary and information is, can be found on the Appalachian Funeral Service. It's in North Carolina. The Appalachian Funeral Service uh, has the information regarding, regarding Audrey. And um, as I said, we express our sympathy to you, Ken, as you mourn the loss of your sister. Also, we just heard that of the death of one of our members, Milburn Muller, died yesterday at the age of 91 years, and uh, there are no arrangements yet that have been made public regarding uh, Milburn's services, if there are any to happen or where they will be and so forth. So we'll, you may, of course, in the community you'll hear about that. Uh, so we express our Christian sympathy to Milburn's family and to all of his friends as he was a very regular person in our worship service until he could no longer attend. Are there any other announcements for us today that we should be made aware of? The sun is out. Yes. Glory. I'm sorry, who? Herb Sigmund from Oh, Herb Sigmund. Oh, Scott. Okay. But yeah, check on Campagna, Oakville, well, all the same, Campagna website. At the St. John, St. John Plum Hill Church on visitation at Wednesday and service on Thursday. You can check out the website for the arrangements for the time. Thank you very much, Lori. And then let us join in singing our Easter song, Thine is the Glory, 310.
our voices as one as we open with prayer. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we see and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gives us birth, our light and our salvation. Let us come into the light, the revealing and healing light of God. God of grace and glory, you have brought us through the night of sin in the light of Jesus' resurrection. Yet our lives are still shadowed by sin. Make us alive in Christ, O God. Make us new as you make all things new. Rescue us from evil and the gloom of sin. Renew us in grace and restore us to living in your holiness. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, Amen. Rejoice with all creation around God's throne. The light of the risen Christ puts to flight all evil deeds, washes away sin, restores innocence in the fallen, casts out hate, brings peace, and humbles earthly pride. Jesus loves us and frees us from our sins by his blood. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Let us enter into our time of prayer as we approach the throne of grace. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer us in steadfast love. You shower your church with grace, O God, Unite the whole church on earth so that with one heart it testifies to the resurrection of Jesus Christ with power and love. We proclaim the blessing of life forevermore. Like dew upon the mountains, refresh your creation. Restore waters, cleanse the air, and provide revitalizing moisture to parched land. Give your whole creation the promise of new life. You place within the heart of the church a spirit of sharing. Give us the power of your generous spirit that we may provide for the needs of others. Announce your peace to those who are lonely, hurting, suffering, or afraid. We lift up in our prayer your children, Milburn and Audrey. We give you thanks for their lives and all that they will always mean to us that is good and kind and perfect. You share the gift of eternal life. In thanksgiving and remembrance, we recall the lives and gifts of those who now live in endless joy. Unite us with them in resurrection hope. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, God's holy word will be shared with us by Shirley and Darlene. We have a very long psalm. Good morning. The first lesson is from the Acts of the Apostles, Acts 4, verses 32 through 35. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, 
for as many as owned lands or, or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The psalm today is from Psalm 133. The refrain is, good and pleasant it is, dwelling in unity. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. Good and pleasant it is, dwelling in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down upon the beard, on the beard of Aaron running down over the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon which falls on the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord ordained his blessing, life forevermore. Good and pleasant it is, dwelling in unity. The reading from the Holy Gospel of St. John 20, 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. into the sermon time with us, but I'd like to thank whoever provided. I, I might know the beautiful daffodils and spring flowers that 
are on the left-hand side of our altar and beautify our worship center today. It is a spring is extraordinarily glorious time of, for Christians and for all the world. Unless I see, unless I feel, a man walked into a local pub and introduced himself to the guy at the next table. The man said, I guess you've probably heard of me. My name's been in the news recently. The second man said, no, sorry, who are you? The first man proudly said, I am last year's winner of the most gullible man competition. The second man said, wow, I've never met a world champion in my life before. How did it feel to win? The first man said, best day of my life, but I recently lost the title. The second man said, really? When? The first man smiled slowly and said, just now. Some of us are more gullible than others. It is said no one is easier to fool than a smart person. Is this why Thomas refused to believe the other disciples when they told him they had seen the risen Christ? Was he afraid of appearing gullible, afraid to trust something too good to be true? Is that why some have trouble believing in Jesus' resurrection? Our Bible study on Zoom is going to be very pertinent, obviously, regarding the answer to this question and the deepening of our faith. The Gospel lesson today is about the world's most famous doubter, Thomas. In fact, he is oftentimes and more frequently called Doubting Thomas. The news of Jesus' resurrection spread quickly, of course, among the disciples and the followers of Jesus. We can imagine their excitement of those who had encountered the risen Christ. They had just experienced the extraordinary sorrow of the trial, of the sentencing, of the dying death on the cross, of the burial in the tomb, and now they've encountered the living Christ. We can also imagine the difficulty those who heard their story had in believing. The most famous holdout, of course, we know as Thomas, and in our gospel lesson, his name, his other name is called the Twin, capital T, W-I-N. Unless I see the print of the nails in his hand, and place my fingers in the print of the nails. And unless I can put my hand in his side, I will not believe. First, many of us have had times that we could identify with Thomas and his doubts. Doubt is one of the most important tools, I believe, that God uses to produce mighty men and women of faith. Doubt is being honest about who and what we are and believe. At times, I wonder if God has not deliberately placed obstacles to our faith in our world in order to strengthen us. It seems clear God intends for us to struggle with great questions of life and the great questions of death and great questions of eternal life. It may be such a struggle that it becomes essential to a strong faith. We ask questions. What is eternal life about and like? How do we enter eternal life? What is life beyond the grave? What is it all about in this resurrection stuff of Easter? Second, in order to experience the joy God intends for us as God's children, we must move beyond our doubts. We must move to a faith that is stronger than our doubts, not remaining in the doubt field, but moving into the field of faith. A young couple named Tommy, interesting, we have Thomas and Tommy, we have Tommy and Sophia here, Tommy and Sophia experienced a struggle common in some marriages. 
Sophia wanted to attend church together, but Tommy didn't. He got nothing out of the services he contended, no inspiration, many doubts and unanswered questions. He wasn't going to sit in church every Sunday and pretend it meant anything to him. One day, Sophia asked Tommy in frustration, what do you, what do you believe in? Tommy thought for a moment and said, Jesus, I like Jesus. He makes sense to me at times, always hedging a little bit there, you know, at times. But to buy into Jesus, I've got to buy into too much other stuff, and that other stuff isn't helpful, like the virgin birth. Oh my, the virgin birth. And then all those miracles the disciples talk about. All those miracles. Maybe the disciples simply made it all up and someone was gullible enough to write down what, they, what was made up. At the end of their discussion, however, Tommy agreed to keep his promise and go to church with Sophia for a couple of more months. One Sunday, the gospel lesson caught Tommy's attention. It was about someone who could have been called Tommy. It was about Thomas. Thomas, Tommy hears, had doubts. So did Tommy. He resonated with the words, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe, said Thomas. Tommy thought I couldn't have put it better myself. If only I could see his body, Tommy thought. If only I could touch his body. That's the way we Thomas people are. Tommy became fixated on that idea. If I could just see Jesus, if I could just touch his body, then I would believe. He was pondering this as his mind was wandering in the worship service. What does it mean to see Jesus? Pondering this when Sophia went up to the table at the altar for communion, then Tommy's thoughts were interrupted as he saw the priest holding up the host, breaking the host into pieces with the announcement that this is the body of Christ broken for you. It caught Tommy's attention. If I could just see Jesus, if I could just touch his body, then I would believe, said Tommy. What does it mean to see Jesus and to touch him? Tommy couldn't see Jesus in the miracles, but when he saw this extraordinary miracle taking place in the broken bread of Jesus' body, Jesus' body he saw was broken and scarred just for him. He suddenly understood what it was to see and to touch Jesus. Tommy understood why doubting Thomas exclaimed loudly, my Lord and my God. Spiritual maturity comes when we move from doubt to faith. Our doubts, our fears, we move beyond them, which reminds me of a favorite song for many of us by a composer, a contemporary songwriter, the name of Marty Haugen. The song is, Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Beautiful words. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O God, from doubts into faith. Coincidentally, I sometimes 
revel on these coincidences, you know. Marty Haugen, who was speaking about this doubt and so was educated at what do you think the university's name was? St. Thomas. St. <laughs> Thomas University in Minneapolis. So here we have Thomas, Tommy, and St. Thomas University. For there is something within the human heart inside, I think, each of us. Some of us do not want to admit it or are embarrassed, but I believe for all of us we are reaching outward and upward. Something in, in our nature senses that my life here on earth, even though it is so wonderful and God has declared it good, is not complete. There is something that is missing. That only a hunger for a relationship with the divine can satisfy. Evidence for God's presence in our lives is too strong to ignore. Third, Christian faith can only be analyzed from the inside. We can no longer ignore it is inside of us. If we remain on the outside looking in, we will never find abundant, meaningful life. We cannot find the divine, no matter how hard we study our mathematical and geometric problems, how well we are and fast we are with the slide rule, or a test tube, or how we have such enormous computers. Only one way to find God, that is to take, as it is said, the leap of faith. Take the leap of faith, entrust our life to God. Enter into that daily walk the walk with God as Savior and Lord of life, that walk in the garden where I talk to him and I see him and he is with me. The leap of faith is an extraordinary phrase. I remember hearing it first in a sermon. The amazing thing in my mind, I don't remember a lot, but I recall it being made at St. Peter United Church of Christ in Elmhurst when I was a student up there many years ago when the pastor spoke and said we walk out on nothing and we land on faith. We walk out on into nothing and we land on faith. How wonderful it is to have that faith on which to land. The only way you and I can prove love is to have experienced it. To love is to have loved and been loved. So it is with faith. The first is by testimony of others. Looking at those around us have given us faith. The second and most conclusive evidence of the existence of God is the experience of God we have for ourselves. God came and revealed God to us in Jesus Christ. It is our choice. As it says in the Old Testament, choose ye this day whom you will serve. You will serve the false gods or the God of my ancestors, Yahweh. It is our choice to step out, do nothing, and land on faith. And it is a message for us when we experience doubts that God exists for God's purposes. Well, what happened to Thomas? After his experience with the risen Christ, there in that room on those two occasions, well, we are told his later career is wrapped in mystery legend and tradition. I remember visiting in the Holy Land when we went to so many places and they said, this is where tradition says so and so happened. So immediately my mind clicked on to, well, we don't know that for sure, do we? But tradition, well, actually tradition is pretty strong. It's gone on for a couple of thousand years. So it is with Thomas that he has traditionally been remembered as being in India, the country, 
an apocryphal or end of times book entitled The Legend of Thomas claims to give his first history. It says when the disciples, and this is interesting, divided up the world to convert it to Jesus Christ, what did Thomas receive? He received India, and he went to India. There is yet existing today a very large, strong denomination in South India called the Thomist, T-H-O-M-I-S-T, Church of South India, which claims Thomas as its immediate follower, I mean, excuse, founder. Thomas dropped his doubts about the pierced body of Jesus and became one of those proclaiming the good news of salvation of resurrection. It is a testimony to the faith we have today. Thomas was a doubter. He had to see it for himself. Jesus did not condemn him for that. However, Jesus did say, thinking of the years to follow, thinking of you and me, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. That's who we are. Doubt, when overcome, gives us deeper, more meaningful faith. To have faith is to surrender to Jesus Christ and to walk in his way. To move from doubt to faith. Thanks be to God for this extraordinary gift that is ours that we celebrate not only at Easter but also every day of our lives. For our Lord Jesus Christ came to save us, to show us the way to life today and always. Amen. I invite Brad to lead us as we affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed we found on our screen and also on the back page of our worship folder. Brad. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the one holy universal Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting.
are able to stand for our blessing we receive from the benediction as Fred pronounces the benediction and blesses us. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Let us depart today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, remembering in our prayers also to pray for Audrey and Milburn as they have passed from this life to that which waits us in life eternal. Amen. <laughs>